now by Jack Sanderellia. Jack, Jack Sanderellia. Gonna rock it now. Gonna, gonna rock it now. Rock it. Jack Sanderellia. Rarellia. T Force. Welcome to the rework of the T Force. Now we going hard because we bumping at the beat source. It's a three course dinner of dudes bringing the news and stats, interviews and cast from the pro scene. So fresh and so clean. Like you're leaning with, I'm in the bot lane. Keep it hot like brand. Practicing his dot game. Give it to you easy like you're Resi in a bot game. Imagine Draven at prime time. Now ulti like LeBlanc can copy that four times. But manlier. Knock it up like now. Fight planning a family. -er. You gotta be tuned in like Sona on the ad wall. Get on the chat call. Can a podcast really be all that? Of course. How do four guys make a try for us? Hey guys, welcome to episode number 260 of the Trinity Force podcast. My name is Adam Ponophobia Cogswell, and I am your host for this lovely evening. As you can see, I'm only joined by two great guys. First and foremost, actually three. According to the overlay, there's three because at Gold Efficiencies here, which is a picture of the frozen mallet with my head on it. Like my head is getting smashed by the frozen mallet. Don't don't ask. Well, oh, that's just mean. Who would come up whoa, with Whoa, whoa, like stop with the toxicity, you goddamn 80 carry all up in my nose all the time. I swear to God, punch. I'm trying to calm it down, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jeez. I'll be better, I swear. Don't don't make us have an intervention. Yeah, right. I'm going to have to set you down and talk to you. <laughs> this is why I don't support you anymore, okay? All my positivity is just that is just it's just not enough. I just want to win so bad. <laughs> and cheer is here. What's up? Hi, Chira. Hey, so, man. we did find out that jugglers are not the most toxic as of last. We had Riot Light and Ghost Crawler on in the previous episode. We found out that, well, AD Carry is one of the most toxic players. So, if you guys did not see the tweets earlier, Punch was attacking me all day and still is attacking me. <laughs> I can't stop. I need some help. <laughs> it, it, it's really a cry for help is what Every it is. Every time you talk, it just hurts. <laughs> 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 All right, enough, enough of that. Uh, first and foremost, guys, thank you so much for listening to the Trinity Force podcast. If you are brand new, we are the Trinity Force Network. We have four podcasts for you to listen to. We have the Trinity Force proper, which releases twice a week. We have the Oz LOL podcast, which is your premier OPL podcast over in the Australia. Oz LOL, right? It's in, over in Australia. Oh, yeah. We have the Four Wards podcast, which is what... Humorously, I don't know if these guys will like this, but it's what the Trinity Force podcast started out as. It is a way to get you into League of Legends. It's, it's to go over all those tips and tricks that we can't talk about because we assume you know. They're going to tell you the things that we assume you know. It's like a, it's like our little our little sister that's going to help you get into the main podcast. So let's hear a little like he wanted something to say, but. Oh, well, considering, you know, I was the one who brought up the way that that was described the other day via text and you don't even give me credit for it. No, it's uh, <laughs> it's the Trinity Forest podcast for the stragglers who haven't yet got to the Trinity Forest podcast. So that's right. <laughs> And the LCS Rundown, which goes up every... It's either Tuesdays or Wednesdays. It kind of depends. Uh, the LCS Rundown this week will go up on Wednesdays. On Wednesday and... Or Thursday. Sorry. It's going to come up a day late this week just because we had some technical difficulties that actually marred that podcast. And as it seems to be always with the LCS Rundown. But if you guys want the NA and EU recap and regional events, the LCS Rundown has it taken care, care of for you. Please visit us at trinityforcenetwork.com um, to move this right into... We are now sponsored by Weldon Green. You may remember him from episode number 239. He's from mindgames.gg. And if you go to bit.ly forward slash Weldon Green, he is giving you 25% off his, uh, he's got this giant training module he does. He may have talked about it last time he was on here, but what it is is it's seven modules with seven lessons each. And it's it's a way to reinforce your mental game in the League of Legends. Now, if you guys haven't noticed, we've been talking a lot about the mental aspect of League of Legends and how you can only be so good mechanically, but if you are better mentally, you're going to win the games, whether that be through positivity, through understanding how the over meta game works, whatever it may be. Every question you ask, we always bring it back to a mental standpoint. Well, Weldon Green is going to break all that down for you from a, from a sports psych level. So again, there's seven modules, seven sessions each. That's 49 lessons total. Now for 149 pounds, which is about 250 US dollars, you can go in there and sign up. Now what this course is, at for $5 a day, you're going to get a 40-minute lesson. So think about it that way. For about an hour a day, you're going to pay five bucks a day to get this lesson. And you have 49 of them total. It's going to really strengthen your, it's going to strengthen your, uh, Mental fortitude in the game. It's going to get you ready. It's, and it's, I guarantee it'll push you. It's going to sharpen price. that mental edge. Yeah. it's. It, I understand the price, the initial price. But what's really great about this is it comes with each lesson. Each lesson has about a 10 to 20 minute video training, a downloadable audio copy of that, and a... And a um, an embedded activity 
So it's it's more than just go in there and answer some questions. It's watch a video, answer some questions, do an activity to really you know strengthen that mental fortitude that you have for League of Legends. Uh, again, bit.ly forward slash Weldon Green, W-E-L-D-O-N-G-R-E-E-N, Weldon Green. And uh, it, it's a great opportunity. If you have the extra spare cash and you can go there, go ahead and you know go there, uh, sign up for it. What's actually the biggest part about this is if you sign up right now, you are grandfathered in for life. And he this is he's actually done. This is his second revision on that lesson. He's actually working on a third, re- third revision. So you get that third revision for free and the fourth and the fifth. He wants this to be ever living, an ever living document, but you can only get that like grandfathered in if you go through our link. That's what's so special about this, you know, this, this awesome thing. So guys, go check that out, please, for us. Uh, other than that, you can go to trinityforcenetwork.com forward slash eight, the number eight bit salute on Saturday, the May 16th. Uh, we're going against Team 2G, guys. Like, everybody out there, you guys have been signing up. You guys have been ready to play. We're having bronze versus bronze, silver versus silver, gold versus gold, platinum versus platinum, and staff versus staff that day. And it's going to be a fun day. And if you go to 8-Bit Salute, that no, trendyforcenetwork.com forward slash 8-Bit Salute, you'll see all of the tier rewards. So if you donate like $5, we'll make that, what is it, $15 is nobody gets trinkets or one side doesn't get trinkets and if somebody else donates fifteen dollars it cancels it out so nobody gets trinkets or everybody gets trinkets they get to decide for fifteen dollars you get to choose where a role will start or for twenty dollars you can say the support has to follow the jungler around the entire time like that's how fun, much fun this is going to be like you you donate you get to choose how these games are going and so we all know payday is this friday it's like the perfect time for you guys to jump right in there <laughs> I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And it's really supporting people like DeClaude. Uh, he would love to have video games. If you guys know what the Operation Supply Drop is, that they you know, they give video games and consoles and controllers and everything to these deployed soldiers who really need our help to stay sane while they're overseas. Because what do they have besides uh, camel spiders, whatever the hell they're called? And, and, oh God. <laughs> As entertainment? Yeah, right. That, that's the only thing that, that our soldiers have is entertainment, our camel spiders. <laughs> right. item. That's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing this. I know they don't have video games, so we're giving the video games through the 8 bit salute. This is all every money that you do, every piece of dollar, every whatever you donate during that time, during this entire Saturday streaming event, goes to an 8 bit salute. I'm going to try to stream, I'm going to stream in the morning from like 6 or 5 to like 8 a.m. Horse Doctor is going to take over until about 1. The event starts at 2. And then after that, we're going to do community games to finish out the night and go through the entire night. And you guys can donate the entire time to make us do crazy, stupid shit. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Yes. Oh, that, man, that reminds me. Punch, you want to play Staff versus Staff? Why not? All right. He's at 2 p.m. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait are, you just, are you just asking him now? And no! Been about this all day? No, no. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm sure. No, no. Yes. All right. I want to see who's supporting me first, though. I mean, I can't just I can't just jump into a game with some noob scrub support. Hey, you know? you, the AD carry might have to follow the jungler around. Somebody could pay twenty dollars yeah. to make like, you do like, that. Like, like, like worrying about who your support is is the least of yeah. your problems. Then I'm rage quitting. At this at this point, somebody <laughs> can donate. Quit. At this point, I, I think I'm gonna make the twenty dollar level the base level. If you donate twenty dollars, you could say no one is ever allowed to touch blue and red buff the entire game, like shit like that. Like, we can just do crazy stuff. I'm going to make that $20 base level. You guys heard it right here, right now. The $20 base level. If you donate at least 20 bucks, well, you can do pretty much anything you want. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Let's move right in. I know I spent a little bit of time shouting stuff out. If you're new here, that's kind of what happens. We spend the first 10 minutes talking, and then we add an extra 10 minutes on the end of the podcast to, you know, do what we're talking about. But this might be a short episode because we're going to talk patch 5.9, which is probably the smallest patch we, re- we have received yet. Compared Perhaps. To I mean, a large chunk of it is Ash, which you've already talked about. Yeah. So, considering that, yeah, you're probably right. Right. The pa- the the Ash uh, rework is coming in here in this patch. She has hit. So, as soon as that the client updates, you guys can play new Ash. Don't forget, mid late Ash with static shift. Guys, try it out. Excuse me. Let's move on to Akali here. She got some changes. Ease cooldown is lowered. R dashes through units. So crescent slash cool, crescent slash cooldown. I'm talking too quick for my own good tonight. I'll slow down here. Um, the cooldown was seven six five four three. It is now five four three two one with a ratio of 0. 0.4 ability power. So E got a giant buff. I and level it. this is this is 
a shift in in power and punch and I kind of talked about this a little bit right before we came on the show. Um, basically, they removed E's ability to proc all the burst on Q, like just a few patches ago. So them giving you the ability to use Crescent Slash, which is your E more often, and giving it a little bit of an ability power increase is just Riot's way of saying, hey, we know we removed a little bit of power here. We're going to shift some more power towards the E. It's not going to be as bursty, but it's going to be more sustained damage, so you get to press more buttons throughout the course of the game. Because before this change, a lot of a couple of players were complaining that E was almost useless mm -hmm. in yeah. how it does very little damage and you use it every three seconds, big whoop, right? So I mean, this is a very significant buff, and we'll see if it's enough to... Uh, I mean, it's not going to put her back to where she was before they nerfed E proccing her Q, but I mean, it's a nice little, little, nice little boost for her. It is if you have the energy to keep up those one-second spams. That's a good point. Right. So, yeah, because every one second you're going to have to spam that. So right now, auto attacks on R is the only thing that procs Q, right? Or does R not proc Q? Good question. It doesn't say. I want to say that auto attacks is the only thing that's procking Q right now. That sounds right to me. Yeah, me Akali's melee attacks at uh, against a marked target will consume it. And uh, Shadow Dance... Yeah, that's that. Shadow Dance doesn't proc it. I want to make sure I had to read the wiki here to make, sure to make it through. I want to make sure nothing got changed. But with Crescent Slash costing you know, uh, 60, 55, 50, 45, 40 energy per proc with a one-second cooldown, you are expending, if you market the Assassin, that's 60 energy. Shadow Dance, Shadow Dance is free. So you can, get, you can get a QE refund. You could probably do E twice through a combo if you don't drop your twilight shroud because so uh, you do refund some of your energy through so your combo. maybe maybe you make up for the missing damage that you had before with the double e but even still i think they might need to shift a little bit more power to it but with the change to shadow dance which is which is her alt uh she might be getting off easier auto attacks and or putting herself in other situations uh, now that they changed her ult up. So um, Shadow da Dance, instead of just what it has in the past, you press the button and you just basically dash right to where somebody is at uh, that you're targeting. Um, it now dashes Akali through that person. Which would so, be nice to get another E off. You'll that's be exactly it. Q, you, go through E, auto attack E again. Well, and I mean, it's gonna, it, it's kind of gonna shift a little bit of how, in a way, you might use your ult. So, like, let's say you're getting ganked by somebody and they come in behind you. If you ult to them, you're just on the other side of them anyway. So, you're technically in a safer position as long as you're positioned well mm -hmm. and they're not taking into consideration that you can jump through them. Um, at the same time, if you jump to somebody to do damage and a jungler shows up right next to them, you're on the other side of them and have fun running a little bit farther and not dying. It's, right. it, I think this is a quality of life buff for assassins, though, because Talon does it. Everybody who has some kind of dash appears behind the target. Kat, uh, Katarina does it as well. Well, it, it, it technically isn't like just appears behind the target. It's dashes through the target, so it doesn't matter where the target's facing, whereas like sure. Talon, you show up and you're right behind them slash half cutting their throat their ankles or whatever you whatever point, riot though. finally designed on for it you brought up a good point though adam and that it's the next two attacks after you dash through that you're <laughs> you have a much easier time landing now as opposed to just right. it, before if you are, are if you shadow dance to them you can get that that one attack be it an auto or an e off but now you can get that second attack off as well which you want to do with this new crescent slash change i mean you want to get the auto to proc your q and you want to use crescent slash as much as possible so you can get both through a full combo, if you're maxing Q, at max rank of Q, you're gaining 40 energy. So a combo of what, Q, R, E, E, you'll get two of them off. You, but you'll have to E before you auto or else you're refunding energy that you, well, I guess you'll get it back. You'll have 80 total, so you can do it twice. In a perfect world, you're getting two procs off. Yeah, 
In a perfect world, you should get... I mean, even in a non-perfect world, you should get two procs off anyway because you're standing behind the target. But yeah, that's the whole point of this is if at the E, the second E allows you to get some of that extra burst back that you were missing in the end game. But let's be fair here. Akali didn't re really need all that extra burst. It just meant she had to get an auto attack off now to do it. Right? You know, so you have an extra... Well, and it it did hurt her. Away. It did hurt her ability when they changed the the Q proking from E and her ability to just hit E a Q on somebody and then immediately E from wherever the range was that she was in that would hit them and proking bonus damage without actually having to commit to anything. So but, like, but does this? With all that said, does it really matter right now in the meta we're in if Akali is getting buffed because? Tank meta, Tanks. Cinder Hulk, etc. It's That's about to say, Katarina. how often are you seeing like? Akali. It's the same thing with like you're not seeing Kha'Zix. Yeah. You're, so, not, you're not seeing Katarina anymore. Yeah. And this is a long discussion so I don't, I don't really want to get into it too much but I know we've mentioned before that even though we call it the tank meta, it's there's not. not really all <laughs> yeah. that many tanks. Right. There are assassins that are still being played. Akali's just not at the top of the list. Yeah. Because she's just not doing the damage right now. And this, I mean, I guess because she pushed it up there for solo queue. It just, I think this, this really is a solo queue change. It just makes yeah. it a little bit better for the players who are already playing her. Um, let's go ahead and move down to the next one, which this is probably the this has been a long time nerf. coming. This is the biggest nerf in this patch, and, <laughs> and in my opinion, this completely kills this character in the role that she's being played in, and that's Annie. Her attack range has been reduced from six twenty five to five seventy five. She does. Yeah, she yeah, is yeah. no longer a baseball pitcher. She can no longer auto attack, harass in the bottom lane. She is, if she's a sport, she's only good as a stunt bot now, and only good if you have flash up. I don't. I don't think it kills her as a support. I mean, even with that stun ability, professional level, you I can think all she does. in. Okay, professionally, maybe, but I mean, she still has insane all in potential. And this mid isn't gonna lane, hurt at all. It really hurts her though because she could she didn't need and her mid abilities. Mid lane's the, the uh, interesting thing because that's where she had the higher win rate. Yeah. If you go back to whenever we talked about that. Right, right, right. So yeah, I, I, I don't play mid lane a lot, so I don't get to play against any in mid lane a lot. But I can understand the the Anybody auto attack range harass is there. Anybody with a longer than five seventy five or six hundred attack range would dominate mid lane. Has a benefit to this. Like all right, cool. They made it so she has some auto attack range counterplay. Great. She probably needed it. Like, yeah. like I, I know, I but we've how many seasons stuff have we gone by and she just they haven't nerfed it. Like, why now? What made you out well, of this hey, whole entire time? Why hey, nerf this? In that in that same vein, though, then why after all these seasons did they just rework Rise? And why after all these seasons did they just rework Ash? Like yeah. you can't use that argument as an, a, a reasoning for they they just decided to change her now, but she's been in the game for five years. Reworking because... Reworking is different than nerfing. It's significant. No, it's different. not. Yes, because it is. like because they, no, you because... change how the champion plays when you rework them, and like yeah, you can argue you change the way the champion plays when you're nerfing an ability because that's the whole point of a nerf and a buff and the way players play change it. But like. It, they they were targeting other areas of Annie when they were nerfing her previously between her what was it stun was it stun range or Q damage stun duration I believe yeah it was stun that's duration that's going bubble now with old and a little bit yes Tolkien. no it's passive it's just passively like six eleven right uh, yeah that's, that's what I meant sixteen but like little things like that like they they're, they're nerfing damage and stuff why did never everyone was already complaining she throws a fucking baseball she ran ad runes why didn't they nerf that before that's my question like we can't answer it i know you guys can't why, have an why, answer all right they didn't nerf it before because maybe they didn't want to pull the trigger because she was a champion that's been like that forever but to say that a rework isn't in the same vein as a nerf like the the immediate thing that pops up to me is is like the the immediate post rework Skarner when he was dog shit like you can't say that that immediate rework didn't like basically just nerf the heck out of that champion who sure. already had issues before the changes and then Riot slowly brought power into his kit because they're like look you know we we this this rework didn't catch on quite the way that we had anticipated We're talking Rengar again yeah I mean it could be a situation like that and 
Well, like, let, let's let's tran- transition this right now. Uh, Chira, I know you you could rant and uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm pulling the host card in this one. I know I That's ranted fine. and I'm gonna pull you off. But speaking of players or champions who have been buffed consistently and no one's playing it, Trundle. This is the yes third patch, not in a row, but third patch that Trundle has been buffed since. And the champion right above her, but go on. Yeah, we and, need to talk Tristan right about too. him. And and mind you. We Trundle have- has always been one of those champions that's like, oh, hey, tanks are getting really popular again. Pick this champion and don't give a shit about him. Three patches ago, was it that Trundle got the um, ra- the range increase on W and uh, flat healing on W? That's what his changes were a few patches ago. Yes. And then they changed something else on him in a patch after that. I can't remember what it was. Um, and then now Trundle, his pillar of ice, his slow has been increased from 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 to 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 with a knockback distance of 150 to 225. CDR Trundle, in my opinion, with a second max of E is the way to go now. Horse Doctor brought that up on Twitter yes, earlier today, did. which I really didn't, I didn't really hear of before that for today. I don't know if you guys had or not, but a 6.6 second cooldown on pillar of ice which has a six-second duration, means you can have that up all the fucking time. Yeah, there's really no reason to max W at that point because you get your 20% flat healing. It there, reduces right. the yeah, there has, not, there has not been a reason to max W since the the most recent change to, to flatten the amount of healing you get out of it. Yeah, because it's 20% flat at all yep. ranks, if I remember correctly. You get a hu- you, yeah, that's exactly what it is. You get a huge benefit just for having one point in it. It's huge, and the range is fourteen hundred on W now, rather than the thousand it was before. So, uh, Trundle Poke Comp Trundle has just got a lot stronger. If we if we can run Poke Comps, I do think Cinder Holt kind of ruins that a little bit, and the way and the pace of the game kind of ruins Poke Comps a little bit. Primarily because you can't, you don't get all that extra gold from dragons to dump into Poke Comps to make them more powerful into the mid game. That's a whole other topic, and someone might be able to prove me wrong. But still, Trundle, I still think out of the top lane, you could. Top lane or jungle, Trundle's super strong in solo queue, and I don't understand why we're not seeing Tr- Trundle in professional play quite yet. Well, and he's he's also, like, you think of that champion, too, if you end up, like, by at some point in the game when you are maxing your W, your attack speed is still scaling because yeah. of it. If you want to, you can go that whole teleport route. You're running CDR, and you have your pillar up all the time, which blocks people's movement, which is amazing. And knocks them back and pops yeah, off and I mean, it, It's a really and... good ability, especially if you can spam it. And then if you decide not to take teleport if, or if you want to be a little bit more ballsy and you take smite on him, that's not like challenging smite pretty good on a character that gets baked in. Uh, yeah, got nerfed this patch too. I mean, that, that that's fine. But again, it's a champion who steals AD, like he steals attack damage from people that are attacking him. So he's already pretty good at Arm dueling resist. certain, yeah, certain champions. Um, he already steals a bunch of defensive stats when he ults, he gets a bunch of health back when he ults, and then you add something that gives him damage every time he hits you as well. Like that's pretty good too. That being said, I still like having a speed boost on him just because sure. Well that champion, you're not but. you're not getting rid of W you still you still need what I what I think about this trundle fix, what I think when now is we're gonna see him in the top lane because if anything MSI and I think that's what they talked about in the LCS rundown when that comes out, if any if MSI taught us anything, it's that you need to feed your top laner. And if you feed mm-hmm. a trundle, it's pretty much over because that trundle is goddamn near unstoppable. At this, I, I I love trundle's power right now. I think he, I agree with you. I think he is very strong. I think picking him kind of re- depends on who you're playing against in the top lane, though, because if you're playing against somebody like a Kennen or a, a Rumble, which yeah. we we do see a lot of Rumble, and Kennen is really powerful right now, and he should be played more. Yes. Um, trundle is just not going to do as much in team fights as they. They're going to do a ton more damage than him. Sure. Yeah. No, Rumble's ultimate. Do I mean equalizer? It, it does game changer, thing. right? Yeah. So I mean, I, I would reserve Trundle as more of that tank buster that we've been talking about. <laughs> I love it. Somebody in chat. Poe's been talking about Trundle coming back for for a month and a half. It's because I keep <laughs> buffing him. You guys aren't playing him. Listen to me. I'm not wrong. <laughs> Trundle and Kennen, like like Puncha said, Kennen, he's always oh, been yeah. good. He's been good forever. And Rumble, he has been always. He's literally always been good. Like, and when they changed Kennen Ultimate to proc more quickly, I started playing him. And I was terrible Kennen before I started playing him. Like, I played him every once in a while, but I was just god-awful. And I'm having a lot of success with him now. I mean, really? I am I am very surprised that I do not see him more in solo queue. Yeah, Kennen's 
you're right. Let, let's talk about another champion that you mentioned earlier, Tristana. Another sleeper champion, though. Another buff. Another buff to Tristana. E explosive charge. Bonus damage per stack has been increased to 30%. And she has a new, it's called Gotta Shoot Fast. Cast time is now reduced by attack speed. I actually like that second change more than the first change. <laughs> um, it, it, throwing that sticky bomb, um, especially when you get into the late game and you have more attack speed, takes up it. It removes some auto attacks that you could be using. Every time you're, every time you, or every second you spend casting a spell means you're not auto attacking, for which is bad for an AD carry, mm -hmm. especially in the late game. You got two phantom dancers and you're critting ninety percent of the time. So reducing the cast speed on that is really nice, especially since you kind of need to use that in the late game now, since. When you attack somebody with your explosive charge, it reduces the cooldown on rapid fire, and you want to have that up as much as possible. So that is a that is a great change. The bonus damage, I I guess I'm happy with. I felt like she did a lot of damage before, so she didn't really need it. But at the same time, it's really hard to get five auto attacks off on somebody. I know so you love Tristana. They're kind of, but I really don't like Tristana playing with her in the bottom lane. I think she's super weak in the laning phase now, and it's and it's kind of hurtful. Like, if she can get it, a late game on, and get some items. Some it's Oof. all the matchup. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, and she gets poked out really easily. Yeah, because we played Ash Nami the other day. Grant Ash is the perfect counter to her. Yeah. I and I, I said, as soon as the game started, I'm like, damn, he picked Ash. Because because we picked the we, we picked her bot lane, I think, the first two picks. And I came back later and I saw the Ab Ash. And I was like, god damn it. <laughs> this guy knows what's up. Yeah. He, that's what we said before. Ash is... Well, was fantastic in the bottom lane. Well, that verdict is still out for new. Now, <laughs> I think she still will be, but yeah, we'll see. There's a, there's a lot of changes, so I'm interested in, interested to see what happens with Ash. But yeah, I mean, this is just straight up off to Tristana again. So eventually, she's probably gonna take over at some point. Right? Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna move back up to the top here since we stop. We jump down to the bottom, and we're gonna go back to Hecarim. Now, Hecarim got to change his rampage. Came in like a hecking ball. God damn it! Hey, they, I I still say Riot has been coming up with some next level trolley stuff up in up in these patch notes, which is awesome. All of them are great. So whoever at Riot is is doing all these, keep it up. They they'll post on Twitter every once in a while who's doing it. I can I can't remember who writes them, but uh, I think Claude. Yeah, <laughs> the Claude. If you're getting paid for this, you need to share some of that podcast money or that that Rito buddy, a Rito buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, came in like a hecking ball. Now deals full damage to monsters. They're really trying to move him out of the top lane into to the jungle. jungle. They've been uh -huh. doing that again. Like it's been three or four patches now. They've been slowly changing things on him to try to move him into the jungle. Uh, the cost of Q has been increased from 20, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32 to 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. Do I do I think this kills Hecarim in the top lane? Not completely, but I think there's been other, I think Skirmisher Saber is really what has been pushed Hecarim out of right. the top lane more than anything. So this is more of a nudge to hey Hecarim can still be a jungler. You should play him there rather than using him as a duelist in the top lane because he no longer has a knight for that early kill pressure. All I see is them trying to shift all the people that are like currently building Cinder Hulk indiscriminately in the top lane more towards. Cinder Hulk going where sort of it's meant to be out of the jungle. And like Which this change. Of... Go ahead. Sorry. I mean, this change to Hecarim just screams that. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it's going to cost more mana, but if you're in the jungle and you're getting that early blue buff, because I mean, people are already building like early frozen hearts on Hecarim. Sheen is something you pick up pretty early on Hecarim. Um, mm -hmm. it, you're, you're making up for that extra mana. Um, once you get a couple buys and like this, this change hurts him quite a bit early. It hurts uh, in top lane quite a bit because he doesn't, but he wasn't winning by spamming Q. It was just that Q was so cheap that he had extra W's or E's right. that he could weave into there. And that what I, I like that they're trying to push people into the jungle to use Cinder Hulk, but I don't like that they're not trying to rework or fix Cinder Hulk because I think this is, I, I think. This is just one of those like theory craft put down your tinfoil hat pone phobia mo moments where I think all these changes are going to come back to bite right in the ass and we're going to get a giant fucking patch later on in the season or in season six where they just revert everything they've done because they tried to make Cinder Hulk a jungle item 
but top laners continued to use it. So then they started to take the top laners and make those junglers. And then suddenly we don't have any top laners left or, you know, top laners are what they don't want top laners to be. So they have to start reverting changes and, you know what I'm saying? Do you see the cycle I mean, that I'm going it, through here? Well, Again, it's one of those things. Hat, it, it, it's one of those things where if you're looking at it from a pure variable standpoint, yeah, I mean, that would make sense if they're switching stuff up like Cinder Hulk wise and like changing up certain things because like, let's say that they changed it so Cinder Hulk is only viable out of the jungle and isn't like viable at all on a bunch of people that are normally going top and then they change those people that are building center hulk but still going top like garen because garen's not going to jungle at all like right. like let's just look at it like that but if they ended up switching up some of his stuff so that you're less likely like if he's going to build center hulk you, you're not going to give him power to shift him towards the jungle just because his kit's not conducive to doing that sort of thing it, it's one of those things like if they ended up getting rid of center hulk down the line you would th they would have to shift power back somehow i do not see them doing like a sweeping revert of stuff just because it doesn't like that, that that's just that 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 would be them making way too much work for themselves down the line it, it, i don't i don't see that happening but which in my opinion means the center hulk's here for the long haul yeah um I, I, I just wanted to go back to hecarim for a second um are we overlooking the now deals full damage to monsters on q is his jungle killer going to be really fucking fast now? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As long as he has blue okay. buff. So, I mean, that could be the change that just catapults so we him. puts into him your, into the jungle. Uh, yeah. Junglers, junglers going to be like, no, fuck your top lane. I'm taking in a jungle because he's clear as hella fast. Ganks are still a little rough with him, but he can do some kind of funky angles because of his E. He, ganks right? are ganks yeah, I mean, still a little rough. Him. The other issue is, like, he's... He, he get hits this like weird sort of lull between having certain items and not being super useful in certain situations, and which is like having a really long cooldown. Yeah, and th that's been like kind of a clincher for why you don't see him out of the jungle as much. Plus, with his W being what it is, and you getting a benefit and more health back if you're hitting a champion with it, it is pretty good in lane with the changes that they made to it so like that's another big piece of it too because he he gets like a, a a special extra benefit out of being around some enemy all the time uh which he isn't necessarily getting out of the jungle because you're not going to see a hecarim going to a lane just to pop his w and do aoe damage to get twice as much health back as if he were just doing it out of the jungle so like yes this is going to increase his clear speed he's going to need blue buff for sure to keep spamming Q that much because I mean it, it's double yeah, damage man, but... Hecarim, let's go it's like the yeah. fucking Chira <laughs> with the Udyr bullshit with his goddamn Tira Udyr only do that on Tiger Udyr but it, it's still a lot of fun good old Muramana Hecarim next OP jungler no because there's still other champions that do everything better than he does Sejuani still exists Sejuani Hec or Rexai, Gragas, those all still exist. Nautilus, he's Rexai. Yeah, De Rexai is a better Hecarim. Yeah, when it comes, well, when it comes to junglers, as when it comes to junglers, he Rexai is a better Hecarim just because she has uh, earlier gank pressure from crazy or from those crazy angles, or even crazier because she can go through some pretty neat walls with her tunnels. Um, and you know, there's also other there all the jungle champions that we're not mentioning here that can do Lee Sin still decent in there as well, and others. Maybe play Trundle out of the jungle, with with his increased pillar in the knockback range. He could probably yank out of the jungle. Yeah, than yank for sure. Yeah, Double, I mean, hell, if you try. yank a long lane, you might even be able to get two E's off in the time it takes you to catch up to somebody. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That would that be? Yeah, like at the very end, pop away from the turret in the long lane in the top. That'd be great. <laughs> Let's move on to Callista. Hey, interesting change. I've been playing. I won't say quite a bit of Callista, but I think she's gonna be my second mastery champion. But with this passive change it might be a little bit more difficult because uh the passive uh marital poise no longer grants marshall, marshall why did i say marital sorry marshall yeah, poise she's getting married to whoever she uses her passive on that's why at like instead of throwing a spear yeah, yeah, through somebody sense. she gives them a ring now it's pretty interesting so that they're, they're exchanging their vows every yeah, time like when right. she when she throws the spear the pact is made mm, got it yes <laughs> marshall poise excuse me for my misspeak as i said it uh, no longer gains bonus distance when dashing backwards. 
And that was something I always tried to... Oh, man, this makes her so much easier for yeah. Breezers to actually fight her. <laughs> this is... Uh, I don't like this change. I, I like this change as somebody who plays against Kalista for Kalista yeah, I mean, players. I, I this like sucks. Necessary. I'm, I'm wondering what Riot envisioned when they first came up with this passive because that's the first thing I thought of was, okay, so she can kite forever. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. not a problem? Okay. That's well, why I don't like this change because I can easily hop away from people and then kite them forever. The dumbasses would keep running at me. And then when they run away, I hop at them and I keep chasing them. I was like a fucking bunny rabbit, a horny little bunny rabbit that just wanted people to be near me. <laughs> Come to me! I, I'm so happy that they changed this up. But, like, it's one of those situations that was sort of a reverse vein passive. So, like, instead of. If you're if you're chasing after somebody, you're getting extra speed to potentially potentially chase. This one's like if somebody's chasing you and you're quick with clicks and whatnot, you just run away quicker. Yeah. While still doing kind of the exact same thing but in reverse. So, like, well, I don't know. They they just removed a, quite a bit of power from her, so they might have to end up again switching sort of power to something else but they won't have to because humorously even with the with the extra dash distance because of how if you didn't build boots or if the champion wasn't very quick if you dash sometimes you had like a this odd quarter second where you kind of had to stand where you were before your auto attack animation starts to get that next auto attack off it didn't happen very often but i would i would wager to say like 30 percent of the time if you were cutting somebody you kind of had to stand in a play you know like you had to stand there and wait for the person to get into your auto attack range because you jumped too far away from them because they weren't fast enough i think punch knows what i'm talking about yep i mean you explained exactly it's, it's just it's it's odd it's hard odd to explain because it didn't feel like that long but if when you're in the game you're like come on get all right i mean <laughs> you, you know? get into further on your auto attacks and if any slight variation interrupts that then it throws you off right but anybody that was good it makes sense the calista needed it because it was nearly impossible to catch her if you didn't, if you did, if you couldn't burst her through a 1.25 second stun, it wasn't even worth jumping into Callista. Now, I, I don't really think this affects her competitive play at all, because um, first of all, during a team fight, it's much harder to get to an AD carry in a competitive play because people are much better at peeling for them. <laughs> and since Callista can just peel for herself at mm -hmm. all times, she's still gonna be fine. And she's got the second smite, which does more damage than smite. Right. I mean, right. it makes smite look so, like so a long joke. As long she has that infinite stacking, like competitive teams are still gonna pick her. Well, they're not really. Yeah, I guess they are picking her this now. It just depends what player, how good of a right. player you are with her is what it is at this point. It's not like a must pick. Yeah. Ah, let's pop open the next beer to keep going with this. <sighs> Punch, what are you drinking? You it's, don't a dark, guess. It's, a, it's a dark horse beer. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> How um, did you know? I just don't yes. remember which. Is it the raspberry one? I don't know which one it is. You got it. It's the raspberry. God, I don't know the name of it, but I. <laughs> I never, I never even heard of it. I just saw it at the store. I'm like, eh, that sounds interesting. So I'll try it out. What's it called? Uh, Dark Horse Raspberry Ale. Okay. <laughs> that, you, you got it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you know that you want to know how I know. Just hold up the beer like the way you were holding it before. It's because the outer edge, like that, I can tell it's a Dark Horse beer yeah. just based on the outer edge of it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, he has PBR Adam. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Don't, okay, so everybody out there who has who can get dark horse beer, they're out of um, they're out of Michigan. They're about thirty minutes south of where I live. Oh, spoiler alert! Tell people where I used to live. Um, <laughs> oh no, they're gonna go stalk where you I used know, to live. Oh no, <laughs> right? No, they, they, it's uh, it's out of Marshall, Michigan. They make really good beer. They have a beer out there called out there now that just hits. Uh, southern stores it's been in michigan it's called smell it uh, smells like a safety meeting the original name of it was smells like weed because it literally smells like weed gotcha okay you, well, what does it taste it, like um citrus interesting it tastes like a malty citrus not so much it, it, it has a little as like this like hint of citrus flavor a little bit more malt but it really does smell like weed never would have guessed yeah, actually, yeah, I, is... I, you know, it's, it's fun to talk about beer. Sorry, we'll get it more guy at, at Jungle Gyms. They put up a little sign, and people write it. They write on the sign like the, the store does to kind of like give you yeah. an idea of how the beer is. You know, like citrusy bomb. It goes. This unique IPA has a smell that you may recognize, or maybe you don't. Can you tell what kind of weed this is? Like that. That's how. Like something like that's how it was weeded or weeded. <laughs> oh. oh. 
Good one. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to Morgana before this turns into the beer podcast. <laughs> I was about to say, you just straight up killed the show. <laughs> great, great job, Adam. You murdered your baby. That, yeah. That's what just happened. <laughs> in, this break, in this break in the podcast brought to you by Dark Horse Beers, the yeah. best beers in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Morgana, Tormented Soil, W. Damage has been um, decreased per second. It was 12, 19, 26, 33, 40. Down to 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. So early game damage decreased. Uh, it gets back up at level 5. It gets about the same than it was before. Level 6, it's 100% as it was previously. Shira Jaden is our mid lane Morgana player and support Morgana player, potentially. How do you feel about the Tormented Soil change? Uh, I mean, I like if I'm playing your mid, usually I'm maxing this first, so that's not a terrible thing. I mean, it's gonna hurt pushing potential a bit, but it was Only almost at the very early levels. Yeah, that that's exactly right. I mean, if by the time you're usually maxing it anyway, it's not that big of a deal. But now, like, I mean, it takes away some of her power in support. No, which I mean, if she's maxing W or and if she only puts one point in W, yeah, she's going to be hurting for it. But it's one of those things like at the point in a game, if you're building a bunch of AP on Morg, your W it might be doing a whole lot of damage and helping you push like crazy. But at the same time, like even when you're pushing waves or whatever and you throw a W down, do you know how difficult it is as support Morg to actually kill a wave when you have with just your W when you I have your allies with you? I think it was about killing the wave though, because I yeah, I don't, I don't think that was your in, well, I don't think it was your intention to to touch on support Morgana, even though right. I agree with you, it probably will do that. Right, but uh, well, it, 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 no, no, see, that's like, why I disagree. I think it is a support Morgana change because I've watched Wrecker play a lot of support Morgana on stream when he was streaming, and he would. He would start. You could start with pretty much anything on Morgana. Like you would, mm -hmm. you would, you wouldn't really start W as support Morgana, but you could because you want to help push the wave to get to level two before the other person, and then roll right into a Q because you know you can win that lane again. Matchup dependent, lane dependent, because there's so many different combinations that can happen in uh, bottom lane. But W was primarily used for one, gaining gold and doing extra damage while you're getting that gold. Not so much the damage really kind of you know. Not that big a deal. You stand in it, you take twelve damage that, to eight. That, that's the but thing. It the helps push the wave. Yeah, but it helps push the wave a little bit. It right. helps get them low and I agree enough. With you. Yeah, I agree with you with that. Okay, I'm saying I don't think that was Ryan's intention. I don't think it was. I, I don't think it was Ryan's intention for her for them to touch on support Morgana as much as mid lane or top lane Morgana mm, and her right. early pushing power. Sure, sure. But uh, but so, since mid and top lane levels E first. This doesn't or W first, sorry. This doesn't affect them as much. No, I don't. I don't. Again, I don't know how much this is going to necessarily change certain things. But in the past, it used to be if you put three points into W and you auto attacked each of the caster minions once, your W would completely kill the entire back wave of a minion line. Um, just af like just throw it down and forget about it, and you are going to get that CS. So like. With the slight damage reduction early, I don't know if you'll necessarily be able to do that. I, I would need to see how many ticks total you get off per time you cast it if something's standing in it the entire time. But like, I see this as a as a support change just in the fact that it removes extra utility in the form of damage from Morgana's W. I hate that. If I you're hate only utility in the form of damage, I hate that. I, I hate saying that too, but like. In this situation, it is because if you drop a W on a wave and you are able to kill that wave faster than the enemy is, you yeah. get an XP advantage so you can get a level up on somebody. I see. So like I, that I is a form of utility. You. I think this is an entire support Morgana change where yeah. they're just stopping it so they can, they, they're not getting as much free for Hass. They're not pushing waves as quickly. They're not healing as much as they previously were because or, of Murphy Hass and bottom lane. Like this really does, it doesn't completely nerf her out of contention because she always has mm -hmm. E and she can always max Black Shield and make it more powerful. She always has a binding that has a fucking trial of a hitbox it just makes her a little bit weaker and well, it, for the, she's, the professional level player she's not as punishing zone control wise like you can't just throw your w in a bush and then well i mean now i guess you can you can throw your w in a bush and somebody's not going to take as much damage if they just want to sit there like let's say nautilus is in there and he's waiting to smack the crap out of you with his anchor well you might w in there and kind of try and zone him off a little bit but if he pops his you know, if he pops his shield and doesn't care and he can sit there a couple seconds and then hook you, sure. or whatever. Like, whereas in the past, that might have been able to knock down that shield, like in that time of, of him waiting. So if you want to look at it from that point, like 
you're 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 removing enemy utility in a, in a you know a situation like that um, because you're you're removing an ability of theirs like from shielding and then the the damage on it doesn't even apply if the shield's n not up. So like in in a it, it is a stealth nerf to utility or I guess a direct nerf to utility in the form of damage in that like it's a it's a zone control tool. It can help push waves. And if you're, let's say you're maxing black shield because they have a lot of AP damage bottom lane or the enemy's like has a Diana that's going to be roaming a lot or something and that shield could be the difference between surviving a gank or not um, and you're only putting one point in W. Like again, that's just an arbitrary thing I'm saying. Like yeah. you might just put one point in W. W is not going to be nearly as effective as it was. Sure. So like... Uh, that's just, that's obvious. By, yeah, by so removing it, numbers, it becomes obviously not as effective as it was. Right. So I mean, it just it 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 it's slightly, or I mean, I don't know. Again, I don't know how many times this necessarily ticks per the entire length that the W is up. So like, what it does forty less damage at, at or let, let's say it does twenty less damage at level one. Let's just mm -hmm. say that like twenty less damage is pretty significant if that's the difference between hitting level two before the enemy does. Yeah. Right. Because, I mean, that's 20 less damage to everything in the minion wave. Which could be equate to one extra auto attack or two extra auto attacks from, your, right. from both of you. Right. So, I, yeah, it, it, this is, I, I see this more of an issue. Because like, if you're playing mid-Morgana, again, you're, you're going to be maxing W just because like, the big thing with Morgana, it's so easy to farm with W. And then if you're pushing the wave to the enemy, depending on who it, who it is, like, and you're able to shove like, somebody like LeBlanc back to a turret, they're not going to be able to last hit under a shirt without blowing a lot of mana, but you're already maxing W, so that it doesn't even hurt you that much. Like as soon as you get that W max back up, well, boom! Like you're why still don't push punch. Do you have any last words to add to this Morgana change? I know you've been sitting nope. there listening. I think we're good. Okay, I mean we can sit here all day and let Chira. I know Chira likes to listen to himself talk sometimes. <laughs> that was trying. To, I can't wink at you. Like I can't like wink at like that. That was a sarcastic comment because you can't see my face. This is a bunch of bullshit. You can wink at me all you want, baby. Nobody, nobody else will see it. <laughs> Let's talk about my top turn. I mean, jungle turn. I mean, mid turn. Nocturne. I mean, nocturne everywhere. Okay. Black Let's, cards, black shadows, black. Well, you know what? Let's talk about mid turn everywhere. with jungle Hecarim because this is what this changes now. <laughs> no. Oh, shit. Uh, e, unspeakable horror damage has been increased from 50, 100, 150, 200, 250 to 80. 80, 120, 160, 200, 260 makes him a little bit more powerful in the jungle. Uh, a little more powerful in the jungle, a little more powerful in the lane. Fear factor, speed bonus towards scared targets now correctly works with allied fear, such as Hecarim's Onslaught of Shadows and Shaco's Jack in the Box. So, so he has fear synergy. Ooh. Yeah, so he has fear synergy, much like Cassiopeia has synergy with uh, Twitch the and poisons. Singed and Poisons, yes. And NB4 on. teams picked, a, and this is a complete joke, nobody do this. NB4 teams picked specifically four fears such as Fiddlesticks, mid, or support. No, please he do it. Let me, let me play top turn. top lane. <laughs> I, I, I would put the challenge down, but I'm so out of practice that I can't put the challenge down. Damn it! I just haven't been able to play. Like I, I was complaining today. I'm like, my Thursdays, my only day to play, I've been just invaded by meetings. That's all I do now is I meet with fucking people and I podcast. Anyway, I, I was going to say, like, in my heyday, anybody could fucking play against me as top turn and beat the shit out of them, but I can't say it anymore because I'm not nearly as good as I once was. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I like this change. It's it's a nice quality of life change with him. He does a little bit extra damage for those single creeps. Gives him the early, earlier, a little bit of early power. Yeah. Allows him to walk in the lane a couple of extra seconds early. Allows mm -hmm. him to lane and do a little bit of extra damage because there are points where you might walk out with that person's got a hundred to two hundred life, and this could be that you know that auto attack E that kills them rather than the auto attack that lets them walk away. So, not too much to talk about this change. It's not really going to impact not too much. I don't think we're going to see impact because of it. But our buddy Olaf getting a giant change i think the first time i text I, I should have brought up the text that chira sent me with this change because he's like i'm gonna be no you didn't say no i said life. no the moment the moment you texted me that all i sent back was make me god <laughs> <laughs> that, i remember that <laughs> hold off ragnarok now grants 50 60 70 percent movement speed towards enemy for one second all right mother one of second, god one second isn't very long 
but it's enough <laughs> <laughs> for him but to land the percent bonus movement speed. It's enough. It's enough. He's like a sprinter. And He's like a a very short it's a sprinter at this he, point. He locks his knees for a second in a crouch position and then leaps at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh Olaf much better. Yeah, I I like this and it like it was funny cuz the first thing I thought was like yeah, it gives you that little extra oomph nudge to get to an enemy as well, but like on the flip side of this and this was like my my major initial thought was I can use Ragnarok to escape and not eat like an extra two auto attacks from a gank no, in lane. It's enemy. It's not away from. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, it's you. It, it's it depends it's on space situation. to get away from anybody. Sure. Yeah, like well, it's more that, of when they engage, you get that initial lock knee jump at the burst, and right. you might not have to blow ghost as early, which means you get a longer ghost and a longer time on the ED carry than you previously got because you were essentially getting a movement speed ghost or, from you pre pressing your R. Or you just hit both like usual, and you basically teleport to them. But you don't need to now. Like this is what's going to separate the good and bad players. To. Is you don't can know if you I'm going to stop doing it. You could press R. You could get. It's the so much more satisfying to hit, hit all it. of your buttons. <laughs> yeah, like let's let's be honest. If you're playing Hacker Room and you have Ghost and you have teleport and you have everything else, how satisfying is it to have an awesome teleport like speed boost gank from your boots and Ghost? Fire everything. Yeah, yeah. you you feel like you feel like NASCAR Hacker Room. Hmm. I want to feel the same way as Olaf. That's all I want. Well, a battle as true as time is Renekton versus Olaf, and Renekton has now had some changes that may take out the Olaf as he only gained attack speed movement. So W, Ruthless Predator, the Shredditor, now grants 50 bonus range on you. So you press W and you huh. gain 50 bonus range. Love that change. Great change. Uh, Self-stun on powering cast is now 0.5 seconds. So you're only stunned for point. You're only your casting time of the ability is 0.5 rather than 0.75, meaning it goes off more quickly and it has an increased range, which gives you that extra 0.25 seconds to do more damage. Right. Life right, or death. So pro level. Yes. Bronze. Probably not. All right. So for somebody who doesn't get that, basically, if you popped W, you basically you locked yourself in place for for 0.75 seconds. Yeah. This reduces empowered that. W. Yeah. Empowered W. So like. It, it's the animation. If you didn't empower it, W, you only empower slashed w was twice. Three slashes. Slash point three two times. five seconds for every slash is essentially right. what it is. So, so this fixes that. Yeah, and gives you the ability to trade from fifty range farther. Oh my god, it's gonna be I mean, so good. One of the most frustrating things about playing Renekton is being just out of range of your right. W, yeah. and you're so angry. Like, god damn it! I just want to stun you, you bitch. Yeah, you're so, running yeah. at him. Your little, the like, this little like spider sense is like tingling out of your head when you have your W active. You're like, I can't. My axe is longer than my arms, but I can't hit you. <laughs> it's the only CC he has. Come on. <laughs> uh, Dominus uh, fixed a bug where you, it would take up to 0.25 seconds to grant the bonus health. I never saw it. And I never Ness saw it. the same change for his fear of the sands. Yeah, I'm sure it only affected some people. Let's move on to Riven. I like this Renekton change. I. I just think this makes more Renekton more powerful. Do I think it puts him back in the top lane as, like, this ruthless predator? Like, his W is, you know, so... No, it comes down to the meta. Yeah. I mean, it's just not the meta for him right now. I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily want to glance over that the ult change on either Nasus or Renekton. But, like, but have you ever seen that bug where... He's yes, it happens all the time, especially if you get it. dove under turret. Like, let's say you get dove under turret by, by like, a, a bunch of people. Like, anybody. Yeah. There would be a situation where, like, oh, they'd go into burst you or whatever, and you would be planning to outplay them sure. by hitting R, and you'd hit it, and you wouldn't get any bonus health, and you would die because Do you think there this was is like a lag type effects thing. Well, I see, like, it used to be one of those situations where you questioned whether or not it was actually you lagging, or if you just didn't hit it fast enough, but the ability went on cooldown or whatever. Like, you effectively weren't getting. A benefit out of using the ability yeah, no, I, and it would I, go on I cool get down. that and, and you you know you can explain it all you want but the only reason i'm glancing over it is because i i've never seen it happen i've never uh, seen I, press r and i've never not gained the life that i've, I've had it happen numerous times playing nasus okay i agree it, it should be an instant cast you gain the life back but again it's one of those situational things and it's really is a 
out. It's one of those things. Maneuvers. I don't think you'll notice it unless it happens to you because like when it happens to you, it's bad because like it's something that you planned for and then your plans just got crushed. <laughs> I like all these Renekton changes. I think they make him super strong. I think he was strong before this. Again, yeah. Granting additional range and allowing him to attack mm-hmm. more quickly just makes it so that he can trade so much harder with, with champions. But I think it depends on the matchup. Yes, 100%. I and mean, then, if, you're, if you're playing against a Maokai, you're not killing the Maokai. And Maokai's going to be more useful than you late game. It's a good pick into that. Sure. But for solo queue, where... You... No, yeah. If you if you play against Rivens all day, then oh hell yeah, pick pick Renekton, please. Yeah, don't don't let that Riven snowball. <laughs> don't uh, don't let Maokai, don't let the Maokai player or somebody playing Maokai turn you away from playing Renekton because I think if you're a better Renekton than they are Maokai, they don't understand how to use the Maokai passive or how to under properly use his you know combo. You're gonna beat him out of lane, and there's definitely gonna be a spike where you could walk back to lane with extra damage that you're gonna push that Maokai and force him out. But there, it's like a five-minute window, maybe, where the Maokai is a little bit strong, or you know, the Rexton's a little bit stronger in lane. All you got to do is kind of lose 10, 10 or fifteen farm, and then I'm, you're better. You're better everywhere else. I'm actually kind of surprised we didn't see as much Renekton with Smite Cinder Hulk out of top. Now that I think about it, because like yeah, it seems he doesn't do anything without damage, because his abilities now scale off the extra AD that he gains. Remember. Well, yeah, but at the same time, it's still a situation where if you're if you are building health on him because you're trying to be a tank and your your power spike is early, so you're gonna try and be as tanky as possible in the late game. Cinder Hulk still goes hand in hand with that by giving you more damage for existing and being a pain in the ass. But I think when you're taking Cinder Hulk top lane, you're looking for the mega tanks, and there are just better champions to pick than why wouldn't, that, that is, why, why wouldn't you play that Mundo true. where you gain all right. your life back on a Q? You can just last center tower like we said before. You know, if you're looking for a mega tank, like Punch said, I think it's 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 Mundo, Maokai, Shivana. Those are all mega. Because what does Shivana gain when she ults? She gains instant. She gains all her abilities, gained more, um, um, the, the, uh, more oomph, and yeah, more, she gains tons of armor, magic, and defensive stance. Like does does Renekton gain that? No, he just gains effective health and, and AOE damage. So his his mid game power spike was negated. That. God, I say this every time. It's the fucking dragon. It's that that dragon doesn't give gold anymore. It fuck it fucked a ton of characters over because they don't get those mid game power spikes from extra gold. You say, you say it screwed a bunch of characters over, but at the same time, it's also opened up yeah, a ton of yeah. people being back in the I'm game. I'm not so. mad about it. I'm just like that's the reason. I don't I'm know, Adam. You seem kind of mad about yeah, it. I'm mad. salty as shit. But I'm not salty about the rivet change, which is the movement speed has been decreased to 345 from 345 to 340. Wind slash missile speed 2200 to 1600. So missile well, slash. Well, guess is, what? You can outplay missile yep. slash now. Hooray! You can, you can, and and uh, this is probably just me not being the greatest ribbon player, but I just felt like there were so many situations where I would wind slash and then somebody would just flash through it yeah. anyway. It's like okay, well, I'm just bad and I shouldn't. I be would try to flash champion. through it, and I couldn't fucking flash through it. But like, like but Curacy, I think can. it depends on the, the it depends on the skill of the Riven player. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. It also depends on like where like if you're trying to to point blank do it, and they know it's coming, and they they flash it like at the narrowest point, then they just outplayed you. And if you gave them the space to do it, there's like a sweet spot for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you have a significant. I mean, it's still 1,600 missile speed, still pretty quick, but you have a 600 less you missile have a chance. speed. To deal. Yeah, I mean, there's a higher likelihood that you won't it immediately bothers get me that, there, that Riot has never officially given a definition or a, uh, a speed. Like, what is one unit speed? You know, we Three and a half before. miles per hour. Give give That's show me don't 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 yeah. quote me on that. Show I made me that what one thousand unit speed is. Damn it, Riot! Like I know I can go look it up and I can figure something out and blah 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 blah. Fuck it, give me on the wiki what it is. All right, whatever. I'm done complaining because this isn't my Adam Soapbox <laughs> hour. Um, Rise has had some changes, and this is really to stop them from from him picking up items that they never envisioned him to pick up because they wanted him to be a mage. They only pick up mage items, so Mirror Mana no longer procs off his abilities. For one, that's well, gonna take long. From his yeah. Uh, so passive arcane mastery clarity while stacking uh, arcane mastery's icon is great to differentiate charging and ready. So if you're used to 
what is it, uh, tier, where tier does the spinny, like clock, and now it just turns gray and then comes back on when it can stack or, or when it's ready. Uh, spell flux no longer triggers single tar- target spell effects. Rylai's mirror mana on instances of damage beyond the first. So it only hits the first person with those on hit effects. So the mirror mana no longer bounces off a ton of people and does like the thousand fucking damage and eat half your mana pool. Oh no. <laughs> oh, we can't have fun YouTube videos anymore. Uh, yeah, un- unintended ab- ability slash item interaction. Surprise, this oh, change surprise, came. right? Desperate power R. Fix the bug. We're casting a spell. Desperate power's buff expired. Cause the spell to not go on cooldown. Just a bug fix. So about your luck, guys. You can't spam, you can't spam it. Uh, Crescent sweep on Zin Zhao has been changed as well. Now applies a 0.75 second stun knockback targets. Big buff for Zin yeah. Zhao. Yeah, I don't think Zin Zhao's ultimate has ever had that oomph feeling whenever you used it. I mean, he he just hasn't seemed like a great initiator, and I think this helps with that. This this is a giant solo cube buff to Xin Zhao, because, like you said, when you pressed R, you always expected there to be an oomph to it. You expected right. something to happen, but you would just push everybody away, and then they would consider a scatter as if you turned on a light and there was roaches in your room. You know what I mean? They just... Mm-hmm. Um, now, when you push them away, there is 0.75 seconds where they cannot move. So it's like this Amumu alt that pushes people away rather than pushes them in place. When Xin Zhao is one of the best level 2 gankers in the world and gets even more powerful when he hits 6 by isolating a target and now being able to stun the entire enemy team, I think this pushes Xin Zhao up in the tier list. I mean, again, it, it really depends on how you use that R. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, because, because, of, because of that knockback factor, I mean, you got to be behind everyone if you want to knock them towards your team or or um this also helps the poke comp Xin Zhao yep when he wants to just all people away from his team but it's a 0.75 second stun where you it's a stun it's not a, it's not a right. root it's a stun keep that in mind so that people can't do anything you know it's not like a major they can't react it. they can't react they're yeah, stuck they, have, they have a period to to basically do a pretty big aoe stun yeah, I, I honestly, I think this makes Xin Zhao, I think this pushes Xin Zhao up to tier one, where tier zero is like Gragas S- Sejuani. I think this makes Xin Zhao tier one. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I feel that strongly about it, but I mean, I definitely agree. It's a it's a very nice change. If we're going to, tier one, I'm looking at solo queue. This makes him a tier one solo queue jungler because he can still, because all Xin, Xin Zhao needs is cooldown reduction and health. Because he's got he's got ton of life steal in his W. He's got a knock up that's always up, and his auto attack gets reset through his abilities. Like and allowing a stun, adding a stun to a kit that already has a lot of CC between a slow and a knock up on a single target. He is now affecting an entire team rather than just one target. So that's yeah, why I, I think you I think you nailed it there. His kit was really strong before, and his R was just kind of there. Mm, yeah. And so if this makes his R that much stronger, then yeah, maybe maybe he is that good now. I like Xin Zhao. I'm kind of like, I'm partial to Xin Zhao because I like him out of the top lane. I think he's a really strong duelist. I think he can do well again in certain matches like against Rivens and whatnot. If he can outplay him, he does very well. Mid lane, he can, he can all in a lot of assassins, but he's going to really shine in the jungle at this point. Uh, Zed, Deathmark. Now has a one second cooldown before it can be reactivated to return to Deathmark's shadow. So anybody who was really, really, really good with Zed... Is now one less really good was said. <laughs> one second less really good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what do you say? Like, for the majority of the people who listen to this podcast, does that change doesn't matter. For the top 0.01% of the players... Yeah, those people that could do all the damage they needed to in less than a second and then teleport back... This this mm-hmm. separate this all these changes between brutalizer and everything just separate the awesome Zed players from the mediocre. I can press my buttons and, and from pop from the less than awesome Zed player. Yeah, I don't think there's much to spend on this. Other people might disagree. There might be something big here that I'm missing out on. But if you're if you're a Zed main, I'm sorry that we're not going to spend time on this. But I'm not sorry. So let's move on because we have a little <laughs> bit more to, to talk about. We have Cinder Hulk and Skirmisher Saber changes. And then that will end this podcast. So, Enchantment Cinderhulk, they are technically we're promoting forest fires. God damn it, Riot. Now does 100% bonus damage to monsters. Remove Cinderhulk's 
Immolate passive no longer increases damage while in combat. So uh, they remove that. So now it does increase damage while in combat. It now does 15 plus 0 0.06, or excuse me, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 of the per champion level magic damage. So it's, it's better for junglers and not so good against the top laners because it only does the base damage of 15 plus 0 0.06 to normal mons or minions. Which, correct me if I'm reading this wrong, but that's less than the minimum damage before. Yeah, it does less damage to just general. Yeah, so they're, they're I mean, they're they're really promoting the use this to clear the jungle faster aspect of yep. it, mm -hmm. rather than the team fighting, kill it's, everybody just by standing there forever aspect. It's because they're because a couple couple of this was skirmisher saber where they're decreasing the time that it lasts from six to four seconds. They're really trying to force people away from using smite out of the top lane unless it's on a specific strategy. They don't want smite to be the go to for top laners anymore. And do and between these two, allowing junglers to clear more quickly with Cinder Hulk, but allowing top laners not to clear the lanes more, as quickly if they don't pick up the uh, Bomby Cinder into what is Bomby Cinder built? What the hell is it called? Uh, it's Sunfire, Sunfire Cape. Cape. Right. I was it, about to say they're pushing like, people towards Sunfire Cape in the top lane rather than Bomby Cinder into Cinder Hulk. It, it, and up until this point, it's been the case that if there's a, a champion that would typically build a Sunfire Cape and that champion could pick Smite up or have an advantage out of Skirmisher Saber, there's no reason not to do it because Cinder Hulk, for all intents and purposes, was better than than uh, Sunfire Cape in like and, every situation. And I still feel like there's going to be that group of people that were building this on Mega Tanks because of the multiplicative right. health bonus. Health. And that hasn't changed. I, I don't think it's going to be that big. I think I think it's going to change top lane a little bit. I don't think we're going to see as many smites out of the top lane because I hope so. two seconds is a lot of time in a skirmish on a top lane to reduce damage by twenty percent, and that's a lot of times is enough. Six seconds is enough time to have an ability come back up that could mean life or death between either champion that is playing. I don't think we're going to see Smite as much anymore because that's not overpowered anymore. Now it is just powerful. and that's Now it's, it's specifically powerful to people who are to, trying to use it in a specific way. To comps that want to use it. Right. Particularly. And that could be exactly true just because people read these changes and they're scared off of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which has happened, what happens all the time. I'm right. looking at this, I don't really, I mean... With Mundo in the top lane, I don't really want to run Skirmisher Saber anymore. I kind of want Flash now, so I can Flash over something, or I can jump, you know, do something. I don't need the, I didn't really need the twenty percent or the the you know, Bomb Center. I can build a Sunfire Cape if I need the, the extra damage to push waves. That's what it comes down to. Before you got free damage to push waves, plus you were being able to duel everybody, so you were an immovable object in the top lane. Now you have to decide: Do I want to push waves or want to be a movable object? You have to make your decision. Which I'm I'm all down for having to make a a choice throughout the game rather than just doing something that's like a sweeping pick because that's the de facto best thing to do. Right. Yeah. I have no idea how we were able to go for an hour and ten minutes with a patch this small. <laughs> right. Well, I want to point on real here that people in top lane weren't building Cinder Hulk for lane clear. You are correct. They were building Cinder Hulk because of Skirmisher Saber, because it allowed you, you know, it allowed you to do the 20% damage reduction and allowed you to do true damage on use. But that was just a bonus of having that where you could push the wave for, you know, for your advantage and then go use your Skirmisher Saber on somebody else because... And if both of you had it, then you were movable objects just farming up into the late game and your team would revolve around you. That's why we saw an MSI, for example, that everybody was targeting top lane because it's it now we, everyone's realizing that top lane is the place to get people fed because AD carried right. it on as powerful as before. There is a whole 30 or 45 minute conversation at this point about the meta and why people are targeting top lanes because for the first time in probably two seasons, top lane is the place to be. And the top lanes where the carries are at. And the carries aren't jacks. The carries are your tanks, or your, your tanks that do damage. Your, your tanks that can run through the rest of the team towards an AD carry who just got smited, smote, smote just got yeah. smote, and is doing 20% less damage to the person that's immediately running after them to murder them. And, and they can't peel them <laughs> because yeah, they have so much life. And yeah, it's just insane. 
Yeah, like it, it, again, it goes back to the. It's one of those situations where, yeah, some, uh, flash might be better in certain situations, but like just a twenty percent damage reduction could still be the make. Like, yeah, cool. Your your flash might have been able to save you, but at the same time, it's like twenty percent damage reduction can save you too in the same sort of thing. But you're also doing extra damage to the target For that you're six reducing. six seconds, the, which is yeah. pretty much the entirety of a team fight. I right. think the previously 10 seconds was. Now team fights last about 14 Going seconds. Going back to like the similarity between a one second move speed buff on somebody like Olaf's ultimate, six seconds was enough time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. One second to six. But let's go back to your point, Shira. How the fuck did we make an hour out of this entire I thing? Have, I, I have no idea. Like, I am at a loss. Well, we did spend a long amount of time on this single line Morgana change, which <laughs> probably didn't warrant that much discussion. <laughs> I tried to reel him in, but Shira was on a roll. And I didn't want to fucking take him <laughs> off. I, I, like, I love called him butter, all uh, right? It's all right. We did it, boys. We, <laughs> we made did it. it, boys. We made it happen. The three man show happened. We're not even scared. We, Cheer and I, can do a fucking two man show. Let's yeah. go. Just, just get me on a moment where I channel my uh, my inner Rivington the third and get lost in my own speaking. <laughs> and, <laughs> Why now, and Lisa, I love I'll it. get, I'll get right Somebody to it. Somebody bail me out. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love Blind Alley, Rivington. All right, guys, if you guys want to run down to Blind Alley, go ahead and go to TrinityForceNetwork.com and check out the 8-Bit Salute because unlike Rivington, we have flashlights you can pick up at the entrance, TrinityForceNetwork.com. You'll find the links right to all the websites. Um, 8-Bit Salute, we are taking part of that on Saturday. Don't forget also to check out the bit.ly forward slash Weldon Green. He's going to hate me for taking that bit.ly, but you know what, Weldon? Hi, buddy. <laughs> Well, and you're the man. We love you. Yeah, we do love him. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to episode number 260. Jesus Christ. Of the Trinity Force podcast. That is, uh, my name is Adam Potophobia Cogs. Well, I'm here with Cheer Jane and a Punch in the Low, guys. We will see you next Monday for episode 261. See Peace. You.